dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News Weekend Edition. Good morning. It is 735 on Saturday, June the 22nd. I'm Will Puckett. Thank you for tuning in to Mountain News this morning, Weekend Edition. Well, yesterday we got a break from the rain, but at about midnight, that break was shattered. We are back to that soggy forecast and Brandon is in here this morning to give us a breakdown of what to expect and Brandon we're in SWAD because it's going to get ugly. Yes, severe weather alert day coverage continues this morning because the possibility of some heavy rain is around and some strong storms too. Let's take a look at live pinpoint Doppler radar and you can see we're starting to see some of those storms drift into our area. Take a little bit of closer look there at parts of Mount Vernon, Rock Castle County there along Highway 150, along I-75, going back into Laurel County, just north of London there. You can see some lightning in that storm near the Greenmount community there along the border with Jackson and Laurel County. So again, be careful careful this morning. We also have those power outages. I want to remind you about over in parts of Pike County near the Dorton area. 627 folks without power there on uh, Kentucky Power's website. The estimated restoration hopefully here in less than an hour. So we'll keep an eye on that. Keep you posted. Flash flood watch continues until 4 o'clock this afternoon for the I-75 in Lake Cumberland counties. Out that way, again, they extended that from 11 o'clock to 4 o'clock this afternoon. The weather service temperatures not moving a whole lot thanks to cloud cover and fog. Visibility issues are rough out there, so take care as you're traveling this morning, basically a dreary kind of day, maybe some sunshine peeking through at times, but that could also stir up the atmosphere and cause some stronger storms possible later this afternoon and this evening. I'll have the rest of the forecast here in a few minutes. Will? All righty, Brandon, thank you. Well, people from across the Commonwealth gathered yesterday at the old Wayland High School gym to remember an Eastern Kentucky legend. King Kelly Coleman, who died earlier this week. He was Kentucky's first Mr. Basketball and many of the records he set still stand today. WYMT's Macy Marie talked to people who came to the little mountain town to honor their friend. Paying their respects to a Kentucky legend. You know, we got to hear some stories more than once, but they were always good to hear. Where he practiced on the side of a hill and the ball rolled away every time he missed the goal. Julian Tackett says he knew Kelly Coleman for several years, but knew about him long before they actually met. Just a legend, literally. And then, of course, his play in our state tournament is still, he still holds records. Coleman led the Whalen Wasp to a Sweet 16 appearance back in 1956 and was named Mr. Basketball that same year. He worked his tail off. His work ethic inspiring those who came after him, like Russell County native Ralph Richardson. He was a respected, outstanding basketball player. But friends say in some ways his skills on the court overshadowed Coleman's other traits. He did not want to be viewed as just a basketball player. He was a very successful man. Saying Coleman was also a businessman and a leader in the community. I mean, these people wouldn't miss this saying the king was not just respected, but also loved. In Floyd County, Macy Marie, WYMT Mountain News. Now, Coleman's visitation lasted until 8 last night. It picks back up at 10 this morning before his funeral at noon. Well, President Donald Trump called off a planned military strike against Iran with, it, with just 10 minutes to spare in response to the downing of an unmanned U.S. military surveillance drone. The U.N. Secretary, Security Council rather, is expected to meet on Monday to discuss the Iran situation. CBS News' Natalie Brand has more. President Trump tweeted that the U.S. military was cocked and loaded and about to retaliate against Iran for downing an unmanned surveillance drone. Just before the president called off the mission, he says he asked his generals how many Iranians would likely be killed. Sir, approximately 150. President Trump explained his decision to change course in an interview with NBC's Meet the Press. And I thought about it for a second. And I said, you know what? They shot down an unmanned uh, drone and here we are sitting with 150 dead people uh, that would have taken place probably within a half an hour after I said go ahead yeah. and I didn't like it I didn't think it was I didn't think it was proportionate the strike plan called for launching multiple missiles at each of the three sites that were part of Iran's air defense system they would have been fully manned round the clock House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said she was pleased with the president's measured response. The strike of that amount of collateral damage would be very provocative 
and I'm glad the president did not take that. Pentagon officials tell CBS News military retaliation is off for now unless or until Iran targets another U.S. aircraft. Retired Admiral and CBS News consultant Sandy Winnefeld says Iran should not be allowed to act with impunity. It's possible the president has simply gone back to his military planners and asked for a better option that he might choose to execute any time. If Iran shoots down another drone, military officers tell CBS News they intend to be ready to retaliate much faster and with fewer estimated casualties. Natalie Brand, CBS News, the White House. Now, a senior administration official confirms to CBS that additional economic sanctions against Iran are likely the next step. Meanwhile, President Trump gave his first interview to a Spanish language network, Telemundo. In the interview, which aired Thursday night, the president defended separating families at the border and blamed the Obama administration for the policy. The Trump administration began separating families at the border in 2017 and enforced a zero tolerance policy announced one year later. Mistake, you saw they called them zero tolerance a mistake. All that, what zero tolerance means to me is we're going to be tough on the border. A team of doctors and attorneys issued a report Thursday detailing inhumane conditions at a Texas border control station just outside El Paso. They say they found about 250 babies, children and teenagers being held without adequate food, water and sanitation. Some had been detained there for weeks. Well, it is estimated there are more than 10 million undocumented immigrants currently in the United States. Last month alone, almost 145,000 immigrants crossed into the U.S. from Mexico. Most asked for political asylum. Well, a date is set for the special session of the West Virginia Senate. The lawmakers are meeting at 5 p.m. Monday. The House passed House Bill 206 late Wednesday evening. The bill would allow for a staggered implementation of charter schools. It would limit the state to three charters until 2023, then allow three more every year following that. Republican Governor Jim Justice praised the bill, saying it is, quote, a major step towards building new opportunities for our children, end quote. A new study published by 24-7 Wall Street suggests Coca-Cola and Pepsi are two of the largest ocean plastic polluters in the world. Coca-Cola topped the list using 3 million tons of packaging annually. To determine pollution contribution, the study reviewed a 2018 study from the Greenpeace and Break Free from Plastics movement examining plastic waste in 42 countries. Tests conducted by a California nonprofit found high levels of arsenic in two bottled water brands. The testing was carried out by the Center for Environmental Health. The group found that Penanyafil water and Starkey water contained higher arsenic levels than tap water, high enough to violate California state guidelines. The chemical can cause reproductive harm and cancer, organ damage, and hormone disruption. The Food and Drug Administration has not recalled either brand. Well, Delta Airlines is waiving rebooking fees and offering flight refunds for passengers affected by a technical outage Wednesday. The undisclosed technical issue affected some customers' ability to book tickets and board flights. Travelers complained on social media about error messages and two-hour telephone hold times. The airline says no flights were canceled, but several were delayed. If customers opted to cancel and get a refund, it was issued an airline credit. Yesterday, loved ones gathered at a ceremony to honor fallen officers. The annual event is held to recognize Kentucky State Police troopers and officers who have died in the line of duty. Matthew Rand was at the emotional ceremony and has more. The state police, they honor our fallen troopers and officers all year long, but it's nice to just have us all come together um, here at our academy for one formal event. Flags of the Kentucky State Police Training Academy were lowered to half-staff Friday in honor of the 29 KSP troopers, two officers, and six highway patrolmen who have died in the line of duty. I've said it many times, I don't care if the color is brown, green, gray, or blue. It's a fraternity, it's a family. The salute not only to the fallen, but also recognizing the sacrifices of those left behind. We want you to know that we will never forget your sacrifice and the one that your loved one made and that you will always be KSP family to us. It meant a lot to Rebecca Tribby, whose husband KSP trooper Anson Blake Tribby was killed in the line of duty in 2013. He gave his life helping someone in need in his job that he loves and 
while we're obviously very sad and miss him every day, we couldn't be more proud of him. I couldn't be more honored to be his widow, and uh, we just want to be able to continue his legacy of all the good he brought to the state. Randy Chrisman came in memory of Trooper Eric Chrisman, who died in a crash while responding to a call fresh out of the academy in 2015. He was really smart, very gifted kid, went to Western on a full presidential scholarship. He could have done anything he wanted to do, but he wanted to be a police officer. Patrolman Robert L. Rowland, Trooper Mac E. Brady. This yearly ceremony making sure these fallen heroes are never forgotten. Seems like it would be easy for people to forget, but they remember every year, and we, we appreciate that so much. It does give us some peace when that happens. We still miss them every day. He was a third generation police officer and he just loved everything about his job. And we said the only regret we have for him is we wish he could have been a police officer longer. Reporting in Frankfurt, Matthew Rand, WYMT Mountain News. Coming up on Mountain News this morning, hear how the East Kentucky Dream Center is helping those in Pikeville. And later we will check in with Jason Lindsay to see what he's working on for us in this morning's Hooked on Science segment. And the chances for showers and storms will continue with an already saturated ground. Flash flooding is still a concern not only today, but all weekend. I'll track the rain for you in about two minutes.